How's it going everybody? My name is Colossals. Welcome back to another Heroes of Storm addition to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the new uh, addition again to Heroes of the Storm roster, Malfoyel, the Archangel of Death and former Archangel of Wisdom. Now Tyrael's taking that over. I, I used to play a lot of Diablo and I was actually keeping up with the lore but I no longer do. <laughs> so any you know any like cool stuff about the lore you won't be able to uh, to ask me but I can still answer some some really basic questions. Anyway, he is a melee assassin uh, kind of like cater towards tanks. Apparently he just shits on tanks uh, and actually on any melee kind of like f heavy front lines like Thrall, like Sonya, but also you know like high health pool heroes like Arthas, like Murden, like Chogo, he, apparently he's really good against those just because of his trait. His trait is called Reaper's Marks. Uh, basic attack afflict non structure targets with Reaper's Marks. By the way, this also uh, counts minions. So I'm actually going to use this ability here. And you can see everybody here is afflicted by this and is taking so much damage. Anyway. Um, for 4 seconds, marked enemies are revealed and take damage equal to 2.5% of their maximum health every 1 second. Obviously this is not going to be great against like, you know, squishies, but against tanks I feel like this might be just super, super, like, just, just a really, really good trait. Obviously, just because you, you, with every single auto attack, you basically apply it once and it's just there for 4 seconds. Every second takes 2.5% away from their health pool, which is pretty crazy. It's a, it's a very crazy DOT, especially for just a basic trait, but uh, super, super interesting. Uh, his Q uses his trait, extract the souls of nearby enemies afflicted by Reaper's Mark, dealing 219 damage, with, which by the way is not that impressive at level 20, and healing Malfail for 96, that's not impressive at all, un unless he spreads it onto a lot of people. Uh, or minions or whatever. Uh, heroic targets heal Malthiel for additional 3% of uh, hero's maximum health. So basically you, your heal will scale from the the, the target's health. So basically let's say you're against Jogal, you're gonna be healing for a shit ton, much much more than like if you'd be you know, stealing, stealing life off of like some like Li Ming or Tracer, you know? So really, really good. Ray Strike is his main, uh, kind of like main mobility. I you to teleport to an like any afflicted um, enemy. And instantly teleport uh, through an enemy afflicted by Reaper's Mark, dealing 129 damage, which again is not that impressive. This is a, this is what's going to be like um, kind of a pattern. His uh, his basic abilities and his basic attacks aren't that impressive. What's impressive about him is his trait and that, uh, how he spreads it. And I think that's gonna basically distinguish uh, good players from bad players of my file. Uh, and this is also also going to refresh. So for example, let's say I hit somebody and then uh, somebody is chasing me, I can go in and then go go that go the other way. But he is still taking damage for another four seconds after my wraith strike. Awesome, awesome. I really like these kind of abilities where, like, kind of similar to Zeratul, you know? Um, you can attack and then you, you can juke, 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 bam. You, 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 you know, you teleport to the other way, uh, to the other side of them and just keep going. Pretty cool. His, his E ability will help you spread his trait. It's called Death, Death Shroud and after a very short duration, unleash a wave of dark mist that applies Reaper's Mark to, hit, uh, to enemies it hits. Doesn't do any damage, it just applies that DOT, that crazy DOT we've already talked about. So, I'm gonna apply it here, you can see. That it's, 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 it has a pretty respectable range, you know? Let's see, can I just, there we go. Pretty good range, I would say. Um, I think he's gonna be pretty good, pretty good in lane, because what he can do is just kinda like, shoot it in the middle of the wave, come come in like that, like that, and just kinda like, heal from the minions, and from every single minion he will get like, almost, it's going to be a very small heal. Let's see what it's going to be at level 1. I'm actually curious about that. Um, set level. So at level 1, it's a 46. So it's 50 heal for level 1, which is actually pretty respectable. Uh, 5 minutes, that's already 250 heal. I think that's pretty respectable, especially that he has only 2,000 health, uh, health at level 1. Let's set it back to 20. Now, when it comes to his talents, I think they're very interesting, and I think um, as of now, there's a very clear, distinguished 
border between very good talents and good and just good talents or i don't think there are any like like trash tier talents some of them might be underpowered uh, some of them might be underpowered but it's never to a point where i would be like oh my god that's just terrible i would never pick this um so level one death's reach uh, increase the wraith strikes range uh, by 35 percent. so let's see a little bit further so that's about range like that and when you pick this up it's actually a pretty sizable increase maybe not that much maybe more uh there we go that is pretty good i would say this gives them a lot of mobility a lot of mobility this this becomes like a kind of similar to blink uh, Bolt of the Storm or actually Blink from Zero Two, which actually isn't that bad. Um, so again, just increasing the the, the teleport uh, range. On the Pale Horse, very, very interesting talent. It's, kind of, it's going to make him kind of like a pseudo global hero because now he moves 50% faster rather than 30. Um, your your normal movement speed is on, on the mounts 30%, additional movement speed, so it's like 130 he moves 150 when he picks up the talent, which basically, again, makes him a like pseudo um, global because he can be at certain uh, points on the map or objectives much faster. And the last one, which I think will be the, go, the way to go, is Fear the Reaper. Activate to increase movement speed by 25% and pass, other pass through other units for seconds. Pfft, crazy. Just crazy. This is just so, so good. I don't know. It's good for for getting away. It's also good for like starter stepping, as in like you, you want to keep up with somebody. Just activate it, and you know you can just like move twenty five percent faster. Um, also, very 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 good for just getting away from a fight. Nobody can body block you. Oh, again, so many uses, and then also this is going to um, synergize uh, directly with another talent at later stage. Level four, die alone. Soul Rip deals 75% more damage if it hits only one hero. Well, again, I don't think you ever want to be hitting one hero unless it's to blow somebody up. And you will need to only apply this to one person. and might be tricky to do so. I don't know. You might be hitting your E. You might hit some minions on the way. Uh, the most reliable way of actually applying your trade to one single person is just not attacking them. And then your Q could do a little bit of damage. 75% is not a lot, and a level 20 this does 20, 2019, which that will almost become a 400 damage, but even 400 damage, I guess it's every two seconds. Again, how likely are you to only keep out one person? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so uh, it's okay. I think it can work. It, it just, it's very tricky to, to get actually going. Uh, very, I think this could actually work very well in solo lane. Like you, you could just pressure somebody right out, out of the lane if you're good with this talent, just straight up. Uh, throwing Shade, uh, hit 20 heroes with Death Shroud, permanently increase the Death Shroud's range by 33% and reduce its cooldown by 20 by 2 seconds. I don't think it's going to be good. This, this has very good range as it is. Uh, this doesn't actually increase its width, which I would like to see, but... Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be picked at all. Um, the two seconds increased. It is the two, second, two seconds decrease on the cooldown and a 33% um, increase is not worth it. It would go to like almost the end of your screen and you can't even teleport that much, you know? It, I don't think it's that, that good. You could get you could get some fun skills on like uh, you know, escaping enemy, but it's a very very like one in a hundred kind of chance. And then the the best talent here, in my opinion, is the Black Harvest. Apply the Reaper's Mark to hunt to heroes for a total of one hundred fifty seconds. Permanently increase a Reaper's Mark duration by two seconds. So this basically adds five percent of enemies' max health as damage to your trait once you finish it. Of course, one hundred fifty seconds is not that easy to do. But I think once you get it done, it's gonna it's going to matter. Like it's going to deal a crap ton of damage. So let's do uh, the harvest. Let's see how much damage it actually does. So let's complete the quest. Let's hit it once. Total damage. We're looking at total damage. 
Oh, it's okay. It's restoring health, so I can't actually show you show how much it does. Three hundred something damage per uh, per second, but I'm not actually sure how much health this thing has. Okay, so I won't be able to show you up until we actually get into the game, but uh, it seem it seems pretty broken. It seems pretty broken. Um, okay, so we have Soul Rip slows by twenty percent for two point five seconds. Not gonna matter unless you're going for a Q build. Q build is one of the things I actually want to try whenever he comes out. Uh, mortality when damaging a hero, wraith, wraith strike deals bonus damage equal to four percent of hero's maximum health against a little bit more tools to deal with tanks. But do you need them? I don't think so. Uh, again, maybe if you're going for range, you could go for this and then for the uh, also for the AOE. Um, at like level, I think 13 or 16, no, 16, yeah, Massacre, but other than that, I'll probably go for the, the Touch of Death, Activate to Reduce Enemy Healing, um, Activate to Reduce Healing received by Heroes Afflicted by uh, Reaper is marked by 50% for 4 seconds, really good for just bursting down a target, or with your ultimate, with one of your ultis, which is by the way my, uh, my favorite out of his two, um, this could do a lot to AoE healing done, like this could just shut off Lucio completely, he's not even that good any anymore, and it could just shut him off, it could shut off someone like uh, Oreo, which is going to be crazy against Oreo, um, really really strong talent, um, I like it a lot, uh, it's basically activated and oh, so so good, I can activate it like that. Anybody who has my trait on him is going to have the, the healing reduced by by 50% for 4 seconds. Crazy boys. Uh, level 10. Tormented souls. Uh, gain 20 armor and unleash a torrent of souls. Continually applying Reaper's Marks to nearby enemies for 4 seconds. Really good. Again, just spreading your, your thing in an AoE around you. It's very similar to how Maelstrom works, but this also gives you... Well, much more damage than Maelstrom. And this also gives you armor. So you're just a little bit more tanky when you're actually in in the middle of, of, of things, you know? And Last Rites is kind of similar to how um, Go For The Throat works, but this has much more damage. Uh, apply a death sentence to an enemy hero that after two seconds deals, dam deals damage equal to 50% of their missing health. So if somebody is sitting at 33% health, they will die. Even if they're staying at 50% health, it's still tw taking the half of their 50% is still a huge deal and it could, it could result you in a kill. And this also is the first, this is also the first questing heroic. Uh, enemy killed while under the effect of Blast Rites permanently reduced its cooldown by 5 seconds to a minimum of 15. So every 15 seconds you will be able to potentially kill somebody or just deal a shit ton of damage and making them retreat or I don't know in the worst case scenario again die best case scenario for you but I think tormented souls will be the way to go kind of like a little bit of a more utility in a team fight tool I might be wrong I might be wrong last rights might be just straight up overpowered might get nerfed or something I don't know but uh, I like the kind of ability to team fight and so I will I will go for this. Let me show you how it works. looks. It's very similar to how this looks. Again, you can you can use you know your your uh, number two, which is the reduced healing, um, and then you can use your again your healing, your damage, and like it's it's pretty crazy. You can, you can get away. You can actually I don't know maybe let's say let's re, let's toggle the cooldowns. So let's say maybe you, you get pushed away, but then you actually want to get back into the enemy team because you just got to heal, and it's just so many different options um, with with Malfael. It's pretty crazy. Um, level thirteen, uh, his survivability tier, increased Souls Rips bonus healing from heroes to four percent rather than three. This could be situational against triple tank, against uh, Chogol and stuff like that. This could be okay, but most of the time you probably won't pick it. Um, marked targets grant physical armor. Basically, if you want to be almost immune, well, no, no, not immune, but you want to cut any any auto attack damage in half which you receive, this is the way to go. Ethereal existence, gain 15 uh, physical armor per enemy hero afflicted by Reaper's Mark. Basically, in the fight, this is going to be almost at basically up all the time because you you have you know basically your team fight 
strength comes from just just being in a team fight you know and just applying your your um your reaper's mark so i think this is going to be really strong um again against auto attack teams against ability damage you still have the, the shroud of wisdom this is a little bit trickier to use than normal um spell shield because this is after two seconds so basically you can activate it you can see after two seconds you will gain the thing um, so it could be a little bit of a tricky talent to use, but it definitely works. Like if you can anticipate when you will be taking bulk of the damage and just kind of activate it, you get you. But what I would go for probably is inevitable end. May uh, activate to become unstoppable, but remove all active reapers mark. This basically reduces, this basically gives you a way to escape almost out of any situation, right? Of course it has a third... 30 second cool this is a cleanse this is a self cleanse on the 30 second cool now how crazy is that it just sounds nuts to me and i think it's going to be broken talent so we're just going to pick it and again if you get these two talents it it sounds pretty nuts right because what you can do you can basically become like a better johanna for a certain situation right because what you can do is you can activate this and activate the the movement speed it can just get out of any situation or actually engage through any cc there is um some of the combinations just sound crazy to me like for example let's toggle the cooldowns here and let's 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 say you go into your ultimate you know they um okay let, let me try that again let's say you, you go into your, your your ulti here um and then let, let's say they cc you you, you just act, you activate these two and you, you're just all over them for two seconds they can't do anything to you push you away you can, if you can anticipate a gust, you will be able to dodge it, stay within the enemy team, keep applying that damage, keep healing every two seconds. By the way, this only has a two second cooldown. Really strong ability. I think this, this is just busted. Everybody should pick it, even if you're going against auto, uh, auto attack team. Again, if they're not, ha not heavy on CC, sure. Uh, you can go for any other talent there on that um, tier beside, I think, the first one. But... Um, if they have uh, any form of like hard CC which can just kill you, this is this is the only way to go, in my opinion. Right, level sixteen is very tricky because it actually makes your level six it makes your Q ability much more attractive, uh, makes your Q build much more attractive. I would say so. Just because of this talent, I would actually go for a Q build. I'm actually going to try Q build on uh, on. Malfael. Reduce uh, Soul's Rip cooldown by one, by 0 0.5 seconds. So this becomes a 1.5 second cooldown. Fucking nuts. And it's increases its range by 50%. Can you see this range? That is nuts. That is crazy. I think this talent is just total bastard, but I think what they did is like, okay, we're gonna give them some mediocre Q talents, and then we're gonna force them into picking, into going those mediocre talents to at level 16, actually, like, you know, rise in power. That is busted. I think this is a busted talent, but but I guess we gotta deal with it, you know? Um, Massacre, a Wraith Strike hits an area. Again, if you're going for the, for the range, and then you might be going for the additional damage on level seven. You might as well just go for the hit in the area. Wraith tracks now damages and applies Reaper's marks to enemies around its target. Pretty good. And the Memento Mori, which is I think the kind of like continuation of our own build, which we built, which we, which we have built here. Um, what it does is uh, Reaper's marks deal 100% increased damage. So basically, instead of 2.5%, uh, they're going to be dealing 5% uh, damage per second, which is just nuts. Um, after afflicting an enemy hero for more than four seconds. Basically, if you attack them twice, that's already like almost a second and a half of them taking that 100% more damage, you know? So it's actually super, super value. And again, if you extend the, the duration by two seconds, even a single basic attack will give, will give you two seconds of, of just busted, busted damage, you know? So pretty, pretty crazy. Let's see how much damage actually takes. So for four seconds, they take the normal damage and then for two additional, they take 5% each second. So they basically take 20% of their health with every single basic attack. How fucking nuts is that? I just have to take a moment because th that, that's, that just sounds crazy to me. Like, that just sounds busted. Four seconds times 2.5 is 10. 
and then you take two seconds uh, times 2.5 times 2 which is 10 20 percent per auto attack of course it's over six seconds so they have a lot of chance you know to to get healed or uh, to respond in any way but this does still sound busted um so again if his level 16 is just the most i think i would actually go as far as saying he is actually the most powerful level 16 in the game uh, just because of these two talents they're just broken uh, i think at the moment um if you're going for a q build a soul collector is is not is just no brainer if you're going for the, for the build which we are going for which i think is just a, a collection of the best talents out of tears and also a little bit of you know synergy i think memento mori is the way to go and then level 20 is our last talent um Level 20 is also pretty pretty strong. Reaper of Souls, Hero Takedowns Extends Torment uh, Soul Duration. I don't think this talent is good. Um, it doesn't... It doesn't... He becomes a death ball, but only at the end of the fight, which which is... I don't think you ever want to use this at the end of the fight. And you won't burst anybody with this damage, you know, with your straight damage after 4 seconds. Um, so I just think it's just, it's just a trash talent. I don't think it's going to be picked at all. It's a shame, but I don't know, something even to something like a 40, 40 armor for the duration would be just a better Reaper of Souls, I think, like, um, upgrade than this is. Um, whatever, we gotta deal with it, we gotta roll, we gotta do, you know, we we just gotta deal with it and pick up something else, which I think is gonna be the final carton. Uh, Death Shroud leaves a trail in its wake for 4 seconds, applying Reaper's Mark to enemies in, uh, in its area. Really strong... Um, talent, but what's, what's what I think is also, I don't think it's broken, okay? And hear me out because you guys might think might think differently. Let's read the talent first. Activate while dead to immediately respawn at the altar, but increase mouth on next respawn time by 25%. So basically it becomes from a 60 second to a 75 second uh, respawn time, which is just crazy. It's super long time. And what can he do alone? Okay, let's say he's the only person he died. Okay, then he's gonna get a lot of value because he, he can just instantly come back to life and just kind of continue the fight. Maybe he overextended or something like that, or maybe he actually uh, saved the teammate by actually throwing himself under the bus, you know? And just presses presses the button and he's back. Um, it could be busted in those situations, but let's say the, the, the friendly team gets wiped and you have this talent and you activate it, it's just, waste because you have to wait for your team anyway to do anything you see what i mean so it's very very situational um you basically have to trust your team that they will pretty much never die with you and that's why i think the final curtain will be like the way to go but there are there will be situations where no one can stop that will be just broken as hell and it will I think this this talent is gonna get nerfed. This one won't. So I'm just saying, final card and will be the way to go. What it does is just basically gonna leave this thing there for four seconds, which is nuts. Which is almost as good as activating your ultimate, you know, because this keeps reapplying your uh, your trait, which I think is just busted. So much damage, so much damage. Anyway, so this has been Mafia. Let's just go over the kind of the two builds that I think are going to be super super powerful um, so again this this is the build I, I think I'm going to be going for mainly whenever I, pl I will play him in the hero league or just in the normal uh, quick match or unranked um, fear, fear the reaper, black harvest, touch of death, tormented souls, inevitable end, memento mori and final curtain they all have like direct synergy with each other and I think they all together, they, they all come together to just create this busted kind of overpowered, not overpowered, but really strong combination. Um, another, th another thing I would go for here, probably still fear, fear the Reaper, um, die alone, cold hands, probably last rides, soul siphon, soul, co soul collector. It's just all Q build basically. You're just trying to work your way up to that level, that crazy level 16. And then I think still final curtain seems pretty strong, although it doesn't get as much value. So with this build, you might just better go off with no one can stop death. Pretty crazy. 
very very good build uh, there's also one more which i want to go over of course it's the 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 deaths the the, the wraith strike so death reach um then you probably go for black harvest still um then you will go for mortality uh torment souls i want to say because it applies the reaper's mark and you might be want you might want to teleport somebody at a bigger range so tormented souls um here it's really up to the situation but again i think inevitable and it's just too broken to not pick and then massacre to apply that aoe damage and then i think it's still final curtain because you did pick up that block harvest which extends the duration um yeah but again if you're picking a duration there's no reason to not pick memento mori you know uh, just because those two seconds will will result in 10 percent of their life so but this could still be broken, you know, like 6 seconds is still 15% 15, uh, 15 of health. Um, and honestly, you know, the the bigger range, what's the range right now? So like right there? No, right there. So this is the range which, and then the AoE, the AoE is the smaller, the, small, the smaller circle right there, which actually sounds, looks really, really big. It's actually a big circle, it's almost, almost like half of whatever we can actually teleport to. Yeah, this could be really strong. Yeah, so kind of like, no, I just, hopefully it's kind of, this gives you like an idea of what you can expect from Malveil. Like, it hopefully it gives you a little bit of ideas to, uh, how you can play around with him. I really believe that um, he has a lot of different options and you, you should just go go out, have fun first, play some quick match, play some unranked, pick him, uh, get to know him, play against him, and just try out this, these three builds and I think you will be super super successful um there's gonna be a video about him coming out soon kind of you know, just giving you a little bit of a rundown i think or maybe it might, it might actually be hero league we might see he's coming out in a week time and i cannot wait hopefully you guys are excited as i am this has been Malfoy. i hope you guys enjoyed if you did leave the like rating if you haven't already subscribe to your channel if you didn't like it leave a down thumb rating and just tell me why you didn't like it you know it was it me was it was it boring was it not entertaining was it not excited i don't know you guys come up with something as always <laughs> uh, but um hopefully hopefully i'll see you guys in the next one peace